Hello friends, this is uh, a walkthrough to uh, the setup that I did yesterday. Uh, so I configured SQL Server availability groups on Azure VM and I did everything from the scratch, the domain controller, the file server and all the VMs from the scratch and then I configured all this on. So this is just a walkthrough from the, of the final product because I could not make a video of how I did it because it took me, took me around 10 hours to do it. So this is the official documentation that you can check in Microsoft and I will share the link in description as well. So what, what you do is, you, you these are the prerequisites, uh, you need a VM for your domain controller, two VMs for SQL and one VM for your file server, the file share. So and then you need a load balancer, I have used a standard load balancer from Azure. So if you're sure if you are uh, already you know into azure that and you have been using azure for a long time then this will just be a cakewalk so uh, this, this uh, there is a steep learning curve here in terms of load balancer which will be a new thing for us uh, so you you can go through the documentation and how load balancer is used in this case and yes uh, so let me just jump into what what i did and how it looks the documentation uh, you can go through the entire documentation it has step by step everything mentioned what you need to do don't give up until you complete the documentation because it is a very lengthy one and once you do it you will come to know how how things are different in this case uh, this is the powershell script that you need to run at the end so this will create the listener name so once you are done with all your failover cluster configuration and stuff you will need to run that with the you know ip from the load balancer so uh, that powershell script has to be run in one of the nodes and that will create the uh, cluster parameter uh, this is the uh, network watcher from azure here you can see my entire uh, topology so the main vnet and the two subnets the admin subnet which has got the domain controller and the other subnet which has got my sql nodes and the file share server then there is a load balancer which uses the two vms the sql nodes as the backend pool so uh, let's 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 just see the documentation quick tip uh, here I have not uh, used you know the public IPs for my SQL database servers I have used the file share to jump into my both uh, SQL nodes to configure my always on to my resource group uh, this is my resource group where I have uh, deployed all my you know required stuffs for the always on setup all the VMs all the public IPs the load balancers I have used a single resource group so that when I need to you know destroy everything it will be quite easy for me so you can see there are around 27 resources that I have deployed it includes everything all the NIC cards and NSGs and the domain controller services and everything one thing to note here uh, I don't have a VPN connection set up for this not the point to site or the site to site so what I have done is I have used the file share server uh, to connect I mean to jump into both my SQL nodes as I already explained previously so uh, I'll, I'll show you how I, uh, I will use my uh, file share server and I'll use the IP the public IP I'll get into the box and then I'll walk you through uh, my entire setup I'll show you uh, all my uh, uh, SQL nodes and uh, we will do a manual failover and an automatic failover and uh, yeah let's let's uh, let's dive into it I'm now connected to the file server and I have jumped into my both the nodes I've already connected uh, this is my node one and you can see that all this one was already already successful uh, the dashboard and uh, this is my node one it's always on configuration so we will do a 
basic tests like a manual failover and check an automatic value failover. Uh, this is my uh, Windows failover cluster manager. So the, yeah, you can see the roles, you can see the IP, you can see uh, the the uh, listener name there, and yes, uh, so that's the cluster name there. So basically, everything remains the same. Only thing changes is that we will use load balancer here for the listener, and you know to check which one. I mean, there will be a probe in load balancer which will keep checking which one is. Uh, I mean, if the servers are active or not, and based on that, uh, there will be a failover. Let's do a quick manual failover. Looks good. Connect. not take long yeah so I've deployed everything in North Europe so yeah there's no latency here I mean when you deploy everything in production then you'll have to take care of your availability sets or you know or zones and all those things redundancy and other stuff manual failover successful let's fail back and do a automatic failover so I'll just shut down the instance and when I shut down the instance, it should do a failover. Instance is shutting down. And the process should begin at the background. You can see it's changing now. The rules have been changing here. And if I do a refresh, Yep, you can see the secondary has taken over the role of primary and the database is active. Let's do a quick test if the database accepts write requests. Uh, and there's a just this table. I will try to edit that table, add some add a single record and see uh, whether it accepts it. And then say yeah, it is accepting. So yes, so automatic failover was successful as well. Let me bring back my instance and set it back to normal. Oh, this is running fine. Uh, a few quick tips on this. Uh, when you're using your free trial uh, as your subscription, you can only deploy four vCPUs in a region. So use uh, the DS1 uh, for uh, with one vCPU. So you can have all the four uh, VMs done you can also use the cloud witness and that so you can you don't need uh, the file share uh, VM and the last tip uh, uh, last tip uh, that you uh, go through the load balancer and documentation properly and understand it and why we use it there is a, a blog available uh, which clears clearly you know states why we use load balancer in Azure because uh, because of security reasons uh, broadcast is disabled on Bnet. So yes, uh, this is all about the video. Uh, let me know if you want me to do more such videos or on actually when I work, should I record my screen?